In the early years of the Galactic Empire, we see an Imperial ship landing on the planet Lamu. Jin Urso sees it and runs to warn her father, Galen Urso and mother Lyra Urso. Lyra calls Saw Gerrera and tells him, he's come for us. Galen says goodbye to his daughter and tells her that he loves her, calling her, Stardust, as he heads off alone to face the Empire. Jin and her mother run to the foothills behind the farmhouse. They stop and Lyra asks Jin if she knows where to go, meaning that Jin is to proceed independently. She then removes her necklace, which has a clear crystal orb on it, attaches it around Jin's neck, and as a way of saying goodbye tells her to trust the Force. Outside, Galen meets Orson Krennic a high-ranking Imperial military officer, who tries to get Galen to come back to work for the Empire. He asks about his family and Galen lies that his wife is dead. When Orson tells his stormtrooper bodyguards to check the house, Lyra appears and draws a weapon on Krennic, they have a standoff. Lyra shoots Krennic, hitting his arm, and is killed. A stormtrooper toy is discovered and Krennic tells his guards to find Galen's daughter. Jin runs away and hides in a prepared bolt hole under a rock in a cave. Saw Guerrera eventually find and rescue her. Fifteen years later, in the Ring of Kafrine, an adult Jin is held in a cell. Meanwhile, commanders of the Rebel Alliance, led by Mon Mothma, discuss the Empire's plan to create a giant weapon capable of destroying entire planets. On the planet Jetta, Bodhi Rook a pilot who has defected from the Empire and wants to join the Rebels, arrives and is apprehended by the local forces there. On the planet Wobani, Jin is being transferred with other prisoners. Suddenly, Rebel forces break in and free them. Wanting to escape, Jin attacks the Rebels and tries to flee but is stopped by K2SO. An Imperial Enforcer droid who's been repurposed to work for the Rebellion. On the moon, Yavin 4, the location of the Rebel base of operations, Mon Mothma and other Rebel leaders talk to Jin about her father. She says that she last saw her dad 15 years ago. The rebels also question her about Saw Gerrera and tell her that he is an extremist causing problems in Jeddah. The rebels say that finding Saw and the captured pilot is paramount to finding out what the Empire is plotting. They offer her a deal, find Saw, and she is free to go. As Jin boards the ship taking her to Jeddah with K2SO and the pilot Cassian Andor. Cassian is told to kill their target and not perform any extraction. At Jeddah, Bodhi is confronted by Saw who now has prosthetic legs and uses a supplemental oxygen mask. Saw doesn't believe Bodhi's story and interrogates him harshly, eventually bringing in a boar gullet, a tentacled creature that terrifies Bodhi and can read his mind. Aboard an Imperial Star Destroyer, Krennic discusses with Grand Moff Tarkin. The Imperial Governor of the outlying areas and overall commander of the Imperial Navy, the ultimate weapon they are creating. Krennic urges that they perform a test of the weapon. Meanwhile, Jin, K2SO, and Cassian arrive at Jeddah. K2SO is told to wait at the ship, and while Cassian scouts the area, Jin is approached by Chirrut Imwe, a blind warrior who notices her necklace and the quality of the stone. Later, when Jin and Cassian roam the city, they notice snipers and the area quickly erupts into a battle. Rebel and Empire forces fight and, while Jin and Cassian take care of the stormtrooper, K2SO arrives and defeats the last set of stormtroopers that arrive on the scene. As they leave the area, they run into another squad of stormtroopers who want to detain them. Chirrut tries asking the stormtroopers to let them go but is attacked by the stormtroopers. Showing excellent skill despite his visual impairment, Chirrut defeats the stormtroopers with a little help from Bayes Malbus, but they are captured by Saw's crew. While Cassian, Chirrut, and Bayes are in a cell, they quickly notice that Bodhi is in the cell next door. Jin is brought directly to Saw. Saw is surprised to see Jin, but Jin instantly confronts him about abandoning her when she was 16. Saw replies that he did it to give her her best chance and suspects Jin of being told to head here to kill him. Jin says that she wants nothing to do with the rebellion at all. On board the the new weapon, Tarkin makes the decision to test the station's super laser on Jeddah and a course is plotted to go there. Saw shows Jin a hologram sent by her father. Her father says in the message that he went with the Empire to give the rebels their best chances and that the weapon they were building is called the Death Star. He says that he made a fail safe in the Death Star by placing a trap within it that will cause a chain reaction, destroying it. He also apologizes to a tearful Jin and tells her to fight for him and to finish what he started, save the rebellion and save the dream. Suddenly, the Death Star attacks Jeddah, firing the station's super laser onto the surface and destroying millions of square miles. Chirrut, Bodhi, and Baze head to the ship while Cassian gets Jin. Despite Jin's help, Sa acknowledges his weakness and tells her to leave him. Everyone else escapes in the ship with K2 so while Jetta is destroyed and Saw is crushed to death. With their test successful and Jetta gone, the Imperial leaders rejoice. However, Governor Tarkin decides to claim all the credit, shutting out Krennic as director of the project. Tarkin threatens further action against Krennic should he protest against his or the Empire's policies. On the ship, Cassian is secretly given instructions to kill Galen if they find him. 
The people on the ship discuss Jin's report of the hologram but, as she left it behind in Jeddah, there is no proof to convince the Alliance. She convinces them, however, to head to Idu to find Galen. On Idu, an imperial mining planet with constant darkness and rain, the crew crash lands their ship. As Cassian and Bodhi head out, Jin questions Cassian's motives. Upon hearing K2 so say that Cassian's weapon was in sniper mode, she heads out, followed by Chirrut and Bays. Nearby, at the Idu mining facility, Krennic is interrogating Galen and six other engineers working for the Empire because he believes one of them is secretly working for the rebels. When Krennic threatens to kill everyone, Galen steps forward and confesses. Krennic still kills the other engineers. While this is happening, Cassian has his rifle sights on Galen but, eventually, does not pull the trigger. Meanwhile, Jin has climbed a long ladder to the platform where Krennic and her father are. Jin calls out to her father just as rebel forces arrive in X-Wing fighters and cause an explosion in a fight. When she regains consciousness, Jin finds her father in critical condition. She tearfully reunites with her father before Galen passes away and Cassian pulls her from his body as they head out of Idu. On the ship, an angry Jin questions Cassian on his motives and he replies that everyone has lost something for the rebellion, and that she only truly started to care because of her father. Krennic arrives on the planet Mustafar and reports to the Emperor's chief enforcer, Darth Vader. Krennic believes he deserves to meet directly with the Emperor to talk about the station's completion and destructive potential. Vader becomes agitated, having heard the reports about Jeddah and Idu, claiming that the space station has begun to cause problems and that utmost secrecy must be maintained. The destruction of Jeddah will be attributed to a mining accident and Krennic must investigate further to see if Galen Erso had compromised the security of the station in any way. When Krennic asks if he's still in charge of the project and if Vader will speak to the Emperor, Force chokes Krennic for a few moments before stalking off. At a meeting back on Yavin 4, the rebel leaders, among them Senator Bail Organa and General Dodona are doubtful of Jin's story and her credibility. Jin proposes to infiltrate the Empire's data storage facility on Scarif and get the plans for the Death Star, ending her argument by saying rebellions are built on hope. She fails to get approval, as Mon Mothma opposes any strike against Scarif and the other rebel leaders agree it's too risky. Outside, Cassian approaches Jin about the mission, a dozen other rebel fighters have decided to join them. With their crew in tow, they use the call sign, Rogue One, and head to Scarif to find the Death Star plans themselves. At Scarif, Bodhi uses his old Imperial passwords to get through the gate in the force field that protects the planet. K2 So, Jin, and Cassian head into the facility to get the plans while the other rebels plant explosives around the landing pads on the perimeter of the facility's island atolls. Director Krennic arrives on Scarif around the same time to review transmissions involving Galen Erso as well as Governor Tarkin. The rebels quickly detonate explosives all over the island. With a full-on battle emerging, the rebel fleet arrives. In the access room for one of the storage units, Jin and Cassian enter the data storage area to find and extract the plans to the Death Star while K2SO stays back by the console to help with the search and guard their backs. While they search for the plans, K2SO fights off stormtroopers. They eventually identify the plans under the codename of the nickname Jin's father gave her, Stardust. When they find the files, K2SO notes the force field and tells them to deliver the plans by getting the physical media themselves. Stormtroopers then overpower him, and K2SO dies, permanently locking the door to the control room with Jin and Cassian inside, where Krennic has spotted them. Outside in the battle, the rebels are able to take down several at ATS, and Bodhi manages to find a way to the control switch to turn on communications. He is unable to turn the switch on during the battle, so Chirrut risks his life, walking over to the switch and turns it on. He is, however, shot on the way back and dies in Baze's arms, telling him that he will always be one with the Force. In the data storage area, Jin and Cassian do some dangerous jumping and climbing to grab the cassette holding the Stardust file, but they're intercepted by Director Krennic. Although they take out the Stormtroopers and shoot Krennic, the wounded Krennic shoots Cassian, who falls, while Jin narrowly escapes. Bodhi gets communications working and notifies the fleet that the force field has been disabled for the information to be transmitted. He is killed by a grenade bomb thrown by a stormtrooper as he finishes. Baze is inspired by Chirrut's sacrifice and fights until he is also killed by a grenade bomb held in the hands of a fallen stormtrooper. Jin finally makes her way to the top of the tower and sees the command console for transmitting data to the rebels. The console prompts her to recalibrate the antenna, and she does, not knowing that Krennic is headed up. The tower is hit by shots from a duel between Rebel and Empire fighters and Jin nearly falls off. Jin tries to send the data but is intercepted by Krennic. Cassian shoots the general and kills him, and then Jin quickly sends the data toward Death Star. On the Death Star, the Imperial commander orders to destroy Scarif. The dangerous laser of the Death Star destroys the planet in one shot. While Jin and Cassian sitting on the beach and looking at the blast. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications to watch more videos like this.